Hey everybody, Matthew here from the Mini Wargaming Forge. And in this video, I'm gonna seriously talk about FDM versus resin printing. I say seriously because there may have been some other videos that were less than serious about it. So this is the very first question that you have to ask for 3D printing is, do you want to buy an FDM printer or do you wanna buy a resin printer? Now for some of you, you might not even know what that is. So let's take a look at an example right here of an FDM printer at work and then we'll take a look at a resin printer at work. So right here we have the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and an FDM, or this is the only time you're ever gonna hear me say this, fused deposition modeling. In other words, what we have is a plastic that is being melted and then layer by layer built into a 3D model. And then back here we have an example of a resin printer with the frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. As you can see here, the resin is a liquid and then we'll talk about the process in just a second. So FDM, resin. Which one should you buy if you wanna get into 3D printing? Well, that depends on what you want to print. So FDM, one of its pros is that it can print large things relatively quickly, depends on the printer that you get, but more importantly, really, really cheap. And on top of that, the material that we print with the PLA that we print terrain with. Now this thing could actually print in a lot of different materials, but we're printing with a PLA, which stands for polylactic acid. Don't have to ever know what that means. Just understand that it's a safe plastic that when it melts, you don't have to worry about the fumes. It's just as bad as if you were cooking food and you were smelling the fumes from the food. So it's all really good. There are other materials you could print with that you do have to worry about the fumes, but when you're printing terrain, which I'm assuming if you're on this channel, you're more about miniatures and terrain, then PLA is all that you need. And so the pros of FDM printing, of course, is that it's cheap, you can print large things, uh, and it doesn't have to take a long time. It depends on the printer, of course. And on top of that, you have access to a ton of files out there that you can purchase in order to be able to do that. And so it's really portable. You can fit this at your house and any of the rooms that you want, and you'll be able to start printing immediately. Now the cons of PLA printing is if you ever want to print miniatures, they don't do a good job. I know some people do print miniatures in FDM, but I've yet to see any that really look good unless they're very, very simple. And also if you want to print parts that are really, really high quality, then resin printing will probably do a better job for that. Even in terrain, there are times where if I want to print like a window sill or a window shutter or a door, I'll print that with resin instead of FDM because it'll do such a better job. Also, if you ever need anything that needs supports, supports and FDM printers are really annoying. But other than that, I'd say if you're looking to print terrain, hands down, FDM is where you go. Now, if we come over and talk about resin printers, resin printers are simply what you definitely want to get if you are going to print miniatures as opposed to terrain. So if we come over here, we can hear some beeping in the background of my curing station. I'm going to show you some exclusive miniatures that nobody else has seen yet except people in this building as for the next Ravage Star campaign. So these were all printed with resin. They're able to get much, much higher quality than FDM ever would be able to do. So if you want to print miniatures, resin is the way it goes. In fact, we could end the video right there of the question FDM versus resin is simply, are you printing terrain or are you printing miniatures? But there is more to it than that. If you want to print miniatures, there are a lot of things you have to understand about resin printing. We will have a separate video about FDM and resin, but in short, resin printing is a lot more toxic. You can't just buy one and stick it in your kitchen and start printing. The fumes from the resin and the resin itself are something that you shouldn't touch or smell. And so we use protective equipment such as respirators and we use nitro gloves. So these are different than latex gloves. Latex will actually, the, the resin will eat right through it whereas nitro gloves, which are used in like the food industry, will be able to survive a lot better. So when you get into 3D printing, the first question of course is going to be which printer should you buy? So I'm gonna go through really quickly my recommendations both for FDM and resin printers. Now, this is based off of my own experience. There are tons of printers out there, many of which are good and many of which are not good. So you can do your own research, but one thing you're gonna find when researching which 3D printer to get is that it's very confusing because everybody out there needs 3D printers for different reasons. So since you're specifically, probably, hopefully, looking to print miniatures or terrain, that's exactly what I have been printing with. And I've gone through a lot of different types of printers for FDM and a few for resin as well. So you can count on the fact that the ones I'm gonna tell you actually work. 
And there will be links below, some of which are affiliate links, not all of them, but I chose the printers first and then got the affiliate links afterwards. So these are really my recommendation. In fact, the one that I recommend the most, I don't even have an affiliate link for. So yes, if you want to support the Mini Wargaming Forge, make sure you use those links to purchase these printers. So let's talk FDM first. Now, here on the floor is a, one of the first printers I got. It wasn't the first, it's one of the first. This is a Creelty Ender 3. You'll notice it's collecting dust. And that's because I say this is the ultimate hobbyist 3D printer. It will work and within six months, you will know everything there is to know about 3D printing because you will have replaced most of the parts in this Ender 3. They are not known for their quality. Creelty used to be one of the leading brands and now I'm not quite sure what happened. They still do have good printers, but I don't bother with them anymore because I found ones that I like better. So honestly, if you're on a tight budget and you really just wanna play around with it, then one of these is actually what you want to get. They're not expensive, and because they will break down, it'll force you to learn about all the different components in 3D printing. And then when you go to get a more expensive printer, you'll have a better idea of how to take care of it. Now, my next step up after that, although this was my second printer, my first was the Anycubic i3 Megas, and I would definitely not recommend those, is I went to the Prusa Mark III. And you'll notice I like those because I still have them. I got three of them sitting right here. And these have been great. Now they are more expensive. You're looking at double to triple the cost of the Ender 3, depending on whether you buy it pre-assembled or not, which I strongly recommend that you do. I think it's like an extra 200 US dollars, but these things take about eight hours to assemble. So you don't want to be doing that yourself. And then they come pre-calibrated as well. So when I bought one of these and spent the extra $200, it came out of the box, it took me about five minutes to get it set up, and then another five, 10 minutes to update the firmware, which they give you instructions on how to do. And then it started printing, no problem. And the other big bonus about the Prusa Mark III's right now is that they recently announced the Mark IV. And so you can buy the Mark IVs, which instantly dropped the price of the Mark III. And I don't know if I'd recommend the Mark IV yet because there's a lot of different things that they say it'll do, but are yet to still be realized. And so I like to go with something that's been out and is tried and true. And the Mark III's have been working really, really well for us. But if you want to spend any amount of money, then the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is 100% by far my favorite. It's a lot more expensive, almost twice the price of the Prusa Mark III, but it is two to three times faster. So if we come in here and take a look at just how fast this thing is going. If you've ever seen a 3D printer working before, this thing is going to look like it's going really fast to you. And on average, it is two to almost three times faster than the Prusa Mark III's. Now there are things you can do to optimize the Mark III's to make them go faster, but right out of the box, that is what we're looking at. On top of that, it has a better nozzle and therefore it doesn't leave the lines on the side of the terrain like you normally would expect. So if we look at a piece of terrain right here, now you will still see some lines, but you can see just how smooth that actually is. It's actually quite amazing what it is able to pull off, even though it is just laying at the filament line by line. So typically, one of the cons I should have mentioned with FDM printing is that you leave these lines, which you then need to sand, or you can give it like an acetone bath, or you can just live with them and paint over them anyways, and just deal with the fact that your train will look like it's been 3D printed, which is fine, just like anything else that you would normally have worked with. But uh, with the Bamboo Labs, you don't get that. So. If you're not on a specific budget, you jump right to this, then right at the gate, you're gonna get it. It'll take you about 15 minutes to unpack it and you'll start printing at lightning speeds in no time. Then let's jump over to the resin printers. Now, the only one I have here to show you today is the one that I would highly recommend, which is the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. Not the cheapest of printers, but this thing prints well, at an 8K resolution, which we'll go into more details in the specific resin video but they do a great job and they have some upgrades coming that might speed them up upwards of six times faster if it all works out the way that they're advertising. These things have been super reliable and they just print non-stop with very few failed prints. And the quality is awesome. I already showed you some, so let's just jump right back to, that's these miniatures that we see right here were all printed with the Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. They even have an upgrade kit now to go to 12K, but I haven't tried that out, so. Not sure if you even need it, to be honest. You can get such good details with your miniatures as it is. Now, other ones that I might recommend for resin printing. The one I started with was the Anycubic Photon Mono X. That one works fine. It's a lot cheaper and it'll get you started. 
but you're not gonna get the same quality as the frozen Mighty 8K Sonic. Sonic Mighty 8K, whatever. I've also worked at the Form Labs one. We actually, about a year ago, acquired, it's about like a three or four thousand dollar printer. And while the quality was really good, it was a pain to work with because everything is proprietary. And so if there's any problems, you weren't able to really fix it yourself. You had to send in parts and get it back. Sometimes some of the parts were just as expensive as some of these other printers as well. So not really worth the extra work. So when it comes to safety for resin, we're gonna talk about that in a future video. I really just wanted to give you some, uh, some initial guidance as to what you would pick. In the future videos, we'll go into FDM printing and resin printing more specifically, and I'll go over all the different tools you're gonna to want, how to set up your washing stations, and anything else that you'd like to know. I'd love to hear your questions, of course, in the comments below, other things that you'd like me to cover at the Mini Wargaming Forge, and we'll be sure to take a look at some of those and try to make videos from them. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming Forge. Happy working, or happy 3D printing, that's what I should say. Happy 3D printing.